Hey everybody! Sorry we're very late, uh, <laughs> but uh, um, I like sleeping, sorry. Anyway, I'm still trying to get my head around doing these at midday instead of much later in the day, but whatever. I will persevere. Anyway, let us uh, get into it. So, it's time for the weekly news for the 10th to the 16th of April, uh, 2023. Hey, Melvin, how you getting on? <laughs> Sorry I'm late. <laughs> anyway, we'll jump into it. So, um, today's news is going to be a little bit weird because the two biggest stories of the week um, involve games I want to know nothing about. <laughs> I, I am doing my best to avoid them as much as possible. Um, so the first one would be the Tears of the Kingdom trailer that came out this week. It's fairly lengthy, it's about four minutes long. And from what I've heard and from what I'm gleaning from uh, Twitter and various social medias, various news articles and stuff, it's a pretty good trailer. <laughs> it's okay, I'm not going to be talking about it. I'm not going to be talking about it. Um... Yeah, uh, basically the trailer exists. Go check it out uh, if you want. I'm avoiding it at least until I finish Breath of the Wild. Um, more on that later. Anyway, moving on. Uh, the other big story is that there's like 25 minutes of Final Fantasy 16 out there as well. Again, I don't want to know. Like, I'm going to play the game. Final Fantasy is one of my favorite series. Um up there with Resident Evil, Devil May Cry, Legacy of Cain, you know, it's, it's, I have a tattoo of this, like, I'm gonna play it. I don't want to know anything else about the game. But if you want to, 25 minutes of it is fairly lengthy, that's plenty of time to be spoiled. So much time. I cannot confirm there are spoilers, because I don't know, I haven't watched it, and also I haven't played the game, so I don't know if it's a spoiler. But I'm not taking the chance. But feel free to do so yourself. I'm also trying to avoid all of those articles that are like, oh, 15 things we noticed in the latest. Yeah, it's like, no, shut up. I don't want to know. <laughs> okay, right, moving on. Next thing, a thing I can actually talk about. Uh, Immortals of Avium or something. Um, this was shown off during... I think it was the Jeff show? The Jeff Keighley ads show in winter. Um, this was shown off as a pre-rendered trailer. Which kind of gave nothing away. We had no real idea what the game was about, what it was like, what its genre was, anything. We had to rely on a press release later that said, yeah, it's a first person shooter or something. Um, so there's a bit more context. It's a fantasy, magical first person shooter deal. Um, I kind of thought it looked interesting enough. Rosario Dawson's in it as well for some reason. Don't ask questions. I'm going to skip ahead to the actual gameplay bit. Or we gameplay. In quotes. We don't know. It could be. This could be bullshit for all we know as well. Um, so choppy frame rate. Um, lots of frame facing issues just in the trailer. You would think they would, you know, make sure these weren't problems in the trailer. But from what we're seeing, it is indeed a first-person shooter, but it's magic instead of guns. You know, so there's a lot of Ghostwire Tokyo in there. Um, there's a fair bit of Forspoken with all the particle effects and shit that's going on all over the place. So I would be on the mindset that I have pretty much no interest in first-person shooters if the only thing that's going with them is shooting. Like, you need to give me something else, or I have no interest. Uh, so stuff like... Call of Duty, Battlefield, that kind of thing. It's like, yeah, yawn. But something like Bioshock, hey, you've got powers and you can roam about the place as well. Okay, cool. Dishonored. Yeah, technically it's a first person shooter, but really it's a stealth game and so on. This is should fall into that bracket of like, yeah, it's a first person shooter, but it's magic. Uh so, you know, it's it's giving you something different, but it's like you kinda just replaced the magic with oh sorry, you kinda just replaced the guns with magic. Like it's still clearly this is the assault rifle magic, this is the shotgun magic, this is the sniper rifle magic, you know, it's like, you haven't really changed it. And, I don't know, I think we need to see a lot more of the gameplay before I can say, definitively, if I have any interest in it whatsoever. Um, 
The fact that it's also coming from EA makes me think probably not. But we'll see. We will see. Anyway, moving on. Right, so, uh, Redfall is to be locked to 30 frames per second at launch on Xbox, at least. Not clear PC yet, we don't know. Um, but it's going to be locked at 30 frames per second on Xbox Series X and S. Xbox Series S will be 1440p at 30 frames per second. Xbox Series X will be 4K at 30 frames per second. There is no option for a 60 FPS performance mode. Really? <laughs> you're you're going to release it like this? Like, Redfall has already been delayed. Um, almost a year. And they still don't have a proper performance mode. Um, it's a little concerning. I think the, the real issue is that because Redfall is an always online shooter is the real problem there and trying to maintain 60 FPS. Thing is, Destiny can do it. I think. I'm pretty sure Destiny 60 FPS. So it's a little, that's a little weird. That's a little concerning. Um, they are planning on releasing a performance mode uh, eventually on consoles after the game has already been released. Again, they are like specific, bleh, specifying consoles here and not PC. So it's entirely possible that PC can do 60 frames per second, or if you have a beefy enough rig, it can do it at least. It might be that your suggested specs will still be or your suggested settings will still be 30 frames per second but that's not great um and this is i think this is microsoft's first release after acquiring bethesda i think ghostwire tokyo was already in development was already very very far into development when microsoft acquired them so i don't really think you can count that death loop something similar you can't really count it as whereas redfall Kinda, you can sort of, you can sort of count it. So it's not a great start for Microsoft. And you might think 30 frames per second, 60 frames per second, that's not a big deal, right? It's fine, you can still play the game. And yes, yes, you can. It's not as massive a deal as people would make it out to be, but it does point towards issues, maybe, from Microsoft's end of things on managing it, but we'll see. Anyway, moving on, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League has been delayed to 2024. This is a massive delay. So, there were rumors that this was going to be delayed to later in the year. Um, and then there were rumors that this was going to be delayed to completely into next year. So it seems like the one that's into next year is the one that won. So it's going to be delayed to February of 2024, which is almost an entire year. Uh, we have made the tough but necessary decision to take the time needed to work on getting the game to be the best quality of the experience for players. You're going to need a lot more time than that to make it the best quality experience for players, considering what they showed off at the state of play. Remember, Suicide Squad Killed the Justice League was shown off to be effectively Fortnite. You know, it's a live service shooter. The characters have very little personality, even though the characters they're supposed to be have a lot of personality. But in-game... Not really. We kind of all play the same. Very disappointing. Anyway, they are giving, giving them an entire year, or almost an entire year. Actually, it might have been an entire year by the time they told them internally when the delay was happening. So it might be the case that when the state of play response came out, um, internally Warner Brothers Rocksteady might have thought, oops. Have we overshot the mark here a little bit? Yes, you have. Um, it's quite clear that the general consensus is we don't want this. You know, and their intention is to sell a product. And if <laughs> the consensus is we do not want your product, you're going to have to go back and you know, tweak it a little bit. Um, it's debatable how much they can change, really. Uh, my feeling is they will probably axe the Battle Pass part. Um, and probably work to, uh, you know, develop a system that will allow them to still use the content they had planned for the Battle Pass stuff, but not have it actually be an obvious Battle Pass thing. The whole, they might think about stripping out the Always Online experience, maybe, considering the, uh, the response Redfall got as well, um... 
There's a lot of things I would like them to strip out, you know? I would like them to completely remake the game, to be perfectly honest. So, that's not going to happen. It's not enough time. But they might be looking to remove some of the more contentious aspects, the more contentious features to the game, like the looting, the battle pass, always online, maybe differentiate the characters a bit better in terms of gameplay mechanics, not just cosmetics. We'll see. We'll see. Like, it's entire- it's almost a whole year. That's a lot of time. It's a lot of time for a game that was effectively finished. You know? Like, you don't spend a whole year polishing. That's not- that's not a thing. So... I don't know, we'll see. Alright, Summer Games Done Quick um, is coming up soon. It's gonna be starting on the end of May. So the end of next month. But the games list has been released. Um, so here's the schedule. Uh, you can check it out all the way over on Games Done Quick's website. Um, I've only highlighted a couple of ones that I think will be kind of funny or really weird to watch. I mean, I'm going to watch all of them because I usually do. But like Ring Fit Adventure as a as a speedrun seems weird. Like how ripped is the person doing this? Or have they found some weird glitch that lets them just fake their way through it? I don't know. Melwin might be happy to see Loom as being, as being a speedrun. 30 minutes? Could you finish? Could you finish Loom in 30 minutes, Melvin? <laughs> That's very fast, at least. Uh, VGA, I don't know what that means. Very good ass, possibly. <laughs> now you think you could? <laughs> 30 minutes. <laughs> okay. Um, Fogs. Uh, Fogs is a really interesting uh, puzzle game where you play two dogs that are attached together. So it's like cat dog, but dog dog. Got it? Okay, so two heads, no bums, basically. They're still stuck together. You <laughs> need to do it before I forget it again. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. The Fogs has a very floaty physics. Um, and that kind of ends up with some really weird shenanigans happening. Um, we played a bit of Fogs on the channel. If you want to look into it yourselves, so check it out on the channel. Um, just search Foley Plays Fogs for a bit. It's a really interesting game. Anyway, moving on. Castlevania Symphony of the Night Randomizer. Randomizers are always interesting. Um, so randomizers will kind of change what rooms you walk into, you get loaded into, what enemies are in the room, what items are in the room, key items, abilities, all get mixed around on the map and stuff like that, and you need to find your way through it. Um, and they're interesting to play. Um, I kind of find them more interesting as a programming exercise because you still have to make sure that the game is playable, like finishable that you haven't locked people out of key items, that puzzle progression can still happen, story progression can still happen, and yet still be kind of crazy randomness. Like, it's really interesting how they go about doing it. Um, Overcooked, Overcooked 2, Night of the Hangry Horde, as a co-op run. It looks like three people playing it. It would be interesting to see how Overcooked is meant to be played with people who actually cooperate. <laughs> it isn't just in complete chaos. Overcooked always chaos, always, when people play it cooperatively, you know? It stretches friendships, breaks up relationships, you know? It's like the putting an Ikea furniture together of video games. So seeing how that is done properly, I guess, cooperatively, will be interesting. Silent Hill Home Pour. Now, you may know that Silent Hill Home Pour... You tried to, <laughs> tried to do it on a New Year's Eve. Ouch. Um, Silent Hill Home Poor. So Home Poor is not a Silent Hill game. There is no Silent Hill game called Silent Hill Home Poor. There is, however, two Silent Hill games called Homecoming and Downpour. Um, they use the same engine, as far as I'm aware. They are, I think, by the same developer, or at least cooperatively between two of the same developers. It did, it did work, though. Okay, good stuff. <laughs> you didn't manage to murder each other trying to play Overcooked. So what I think this is, I haven't looked into it, but I think this is a randomized mixer between uh, Homecoming and Downpour, uh, where they have kind of both of the games working at the same time, and every time you load into a new area, you potentially load into a new game. Um, I have seen this done with some of the Metroid games, and I have seen this done with Metroid and Zelda at the same time, uh, which is really weird. It's like going through... Going through... Um, 
think it was going through a loading transition or going into a cave in Zelda, you would end up in Metroid and going through certain doors in Metroid, you'd end up in Zelda. I think that's what they're going for here. Um, Signalis, I don't think will be weird. I think it'll be more, I just really want to see that speedrun because that game is incredibly good, but I found it really hard. So I'm kind of interested to see how that's played. Um, in under an hour, which is pretty impressive. Choo Choo Charles, uh, you may know as the game that is Thomas the Tank Engine, but it's an angry demon spider. Right, it's a kind of survival type thing where you are on an island on your own train and there is this evil demon Thomas the Tank Engine spider train roaming about the island and you need to kill it. Apparently you can do it in under 30 minutes, which is pretty good. Uh, and then Resident Evil 6, I've never seen a speedrun of Resident Evil 6. I'm sure they exist, I've just never seen one. Um, so I'll be interested to see it, because, again, I've never seen it done. I've seen pretty much every other Resident Evil done as a speedrun, but not that one, so I think that'll be interesting. Sifu for the same reason. Uh, I found Sifu really hard, um, but they're gonna do it in under an hour on Master Difficulty. So again, that'll be pretty impressive. <laughs> and as you can see, there is a fairly lengthy list of other games. Super hot in VR. As a speedrun, okay, sure, under 15 minutes, that'll be insane. Anyway, that is all kicking off on May the 28th, it's a Sunday, it'll run for uh, to the next Sunday, effectively, um, and it's for charity, so go and check it out. Okay, the free Epic Games for this week, so on Thursday uh, is when the new games come out. Uh, it'll be Beyond Blue, first is a single player narrative adventure that takes you deep into our planet's beating blue heart. Explore the awesome wonder and unbound mystery that exists within the world's ocean. So it is a walking sim? Swimming sim, I guess? Um, we're just hanging out with uh, abyssal horrors and scanning them, apparently. A chance to get totally lost in the moment. Okay. Well, there you go. But also... There's Never Alone, uh, Never Alone. Experience the epic journey of Nuna and Fox as they search for the source of an eternal blizzard that threatens the survival of everything they have ever known, which I believe is a kind of side scrolly adventure title kind of thing. And it's got a cute little Arctic Fox in it, so why not give it a shot? I think I have this. I don't think I've ever played it. It must have been a PlayStation Plus thing or something. Features co-op, somebody can play the Fox. Awesome. Anyway, <laughs> that's that. Uh, they will be free on the Epic Game Store on Thursday. Right, um, PlayStation Plus game catalog refresh. So the game catalog for April for PlayStation Plus uh, Extra and PlayStation Plus Premium, which are the two additional um, subscription tiers. So first up for PlayStation Plus Extra, uh, Kena Bridge of Spirits, which is a gorgeous game. Uh, I don't find it particularly fun to play necessarily, but it is gorgeous. <laughs> uh, it is almost like Pixar level quality in terms of um, graphics and fidelity. Um, I kind of find... I found the combat to be unnecessarily frustrating. Like, they're going for difficult combat, and it just isn't difficult. It's frustrating. You know, it's enemies hit too hard. For the kind of game that it is, and for the tools at Kena's, Kena's disposal, the game is unnecessarily frustrating um, for combat. Um, I did end up just finding exploits where I could just use the bow constantly. Like, I'm supposed to use the staff as an actual spear and stuff like that. It was like, nah, I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna shoot them with the bow, it's faster. I don't want to engage in the actual combat, thanks kind of detracts a little bit, but otherwise it's a fun game. Other than that, it's a fun exploration puzzle thing, and it's quite pretty. And if you have PlayStation Plus Extra, if you're paying for it already, it'll be free. Asterisk. Uh, Doom Eternal is really good. It's a really good first-person shooter. I know people give it shit because it's not as good as the remake Doom. I still think it's a really good game. Is it as good? No. Uh, the original, not the original Doom, the original remake of Doom is much tighter paced um, and it has a much stronger focus on guns and shooting and just being a badass kind of thing. Doom Eternal is too long um, and has too many mechanics. It makes it feel kind of confusing and a bit um, clunky. 
but it's still fun. I still find it a fun game. I still be meaning to do Doom and Doom Eternal on the channel, and there I think both of them at this point have been on PlayStation Plus, so I should be able to do it. Uh, Riders Republic is a massively multiplayer uh, extreme sports game. Uh, so it is 50 players in PvP epic races, where it's like tons of you just thrown down the mountain on your on your mountain bike or on a snowboard or in your parasail. That's not a parasail. What are they called? Wingsuits? That kind of thing. Uh, you know, racing shit. Whatever. Who cares? <laughs> Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus um, is also a very good first person shooter. Um, it's the sequel to The New Order, I think, or The New Blood or something like that. Um, again, very good first person shooter. Um, Slay the Spire is a deck building roguelike kind of adventure game that people seem to really, really like. I don't like deck builders, so moving on. Mr. Monster Boy in the Cursed Kingdom is a very fun uh, side-scrolling adventure game. Um, it's almost like an adventure platformer. Um, the Monster Boy games are all very fun, and I don't think people know a lot about them. Um, if you've played any of the Shantae games, uh, they're very similar to them. Um, the Evil Within, the original, play it on easy. Trust me, do, do yourself a favor and play it on easy because the combat is punishingly difficult and not in the fun, oh, I made a mistake and oh, they got me kind of difficult. It's punishing in the, he hit me from out of fucking nowhere or glitched across the map and somehow took my head off. You know, it's that kind of shit. You don't want that. Just play it on easy and do yourself a favor. But otherwise, fun game. I quite liked it. Um, Wolfenstein The Old Blood, which I think is a prequel to The New Blood. I, I don't know the actual order of games for the Wolfenstein reboots. They don't have a, they don't have a coherent name, naming convention. It doesn't make sense to me. It's one of them. I'm not sure where in the order it actually appears. Um, but it's another pretty good first person shooter. Fishing, moving on. Uh, Paradise Killer, excellent murder mystery game. Uh, we did a full Let's Play of it on the channel. Um, I would suggest, though, if you have any interest in it, to do not watch it until you have played it yourself. Because, obviously, spoilers. It's a murder mystery thing. Um, but it is excellent. Um, it's just so weird um, and so engrossing. I just found it really, really good. And I, <laughs> I'm holding out for a sequel or another entry some, something similar to it. Sackboy Big Adventure is already on PlayStation Plus uh, Essential this month, uh, but it will be gone next month. So if you want to keep it, um, get it now or sign up for PlayStation Plus um, Extra, I guess. But it is a adventure game starring Sackboy from Little Big Planet. It does not have the creation suite that Little Big Planet has. So it's a completely self-contained game. Pretty good, actually. You know, you give it a shot. All right, PlayStation Premium continues to get shafted, even though it is the most expensive tier of PlayStation Plus. It really is not treated that way, but okay. Uh, pretty much every other Doom. More, more. I think there's one or two Dooms aren't there, but pretty much every other Doom is. So the original Doom, Doom Two, Doom Sixty Four, Doom Three, and now Doom Eternal is on PlayStation Plus Extra, and I'm pretty sure the Doom Remake has been on PlayStation Plus, at least. Uh, I'm not sure if it's been in the uh, the catalog. And then added on top of that, Dishonored Definitive Edition, which is a really good first person stealth game. Excellent. Uh, I really liked it. Uh, pointed out here at the bottom in the, in the small text that they hope you don't read is a bunch of games are leaving the catalog, including Spider-Man and the Resident Evil remake, uh, as well as a couple of others. The entire PlayStation Plus collection is also disappearing. Uh, anyone who bought a PS5 in and around launch time up until now, or up until the end of May, would have had access to the PlayStation Plus collection, which is 20-ish games for free, including things like Bloodborne, Persona, Final Fantasy XV, Horizon, I think, and a bunch of other stuff. They're going away. So if you want to have them, go redeem them now, would be my suggestion. Um, I'm not sure if you don't own a PS5, but do own a PS4 and have PlayStation Plus, can you still get it? I don't know. I think there is a way to do it, but I haven't investigated it. If you're interested though, you know, look into it yourselves. Um, it's pretty kind of interesting thing here in 
April's PlayStation Plus catalog is it's Bethesda heavy. There's a lot of Bethesda, um, id Software, Arcane, and so on. Um, but they're all under Zenimax Bethesda, effectively. Like Wolfenstein, Doom, Dishonored, uh, Evil Within. They're all Bethesda owned IPs, which are all Microsoft now owned IPs, and yet they're appearing on PlayStation Plus. You may be aware, because I talked about it a lot, that Microsoft and Sony, or not my, sorry, Microsoft and Activision are currently working on a merger, and they're trying to get it through the various regulatory bodies who oversee those kind of things and make sure they're not um, monopolies or they're not stifling um, competition in the market and stuff like that. Microsoft own uh, Bethesda. As I said, a lot of Bethesda IP appearing in the PlayStation Plus catalog. Sony are very against the merger and have been pretty much the main combatants uh, in trying to get it scuppered. Um, to see these games appearing on the catalog, it benefits Microsoft a lot more because it shows that they're not looking to tie up exclusives. You know, they're not looking to remove games from Sony's market or stuff like that. Um, so it helps their end of the argument a lot more. I'm curious. Like, clearly Sony have to approve what games go on PlayStation Plus catalog. If anything, they, they seek them out, probably. I'm wondering if this was a concession drawn out from Microsoft that... You know, games have to appear on the PlayStation Plus catalog or something like that. And it's like, if you can agree to do that for the next 10 years or something, then maybe they won't have as big an issue with it. Or maybe Sony were strong-armed into it from... You know, uh, negotiating policies and be like, Call of Duty is not a big deal. Look, just take this. This deal's going through anyway. If you want anything out of us, this is what you'll get. We're obviously never really going to know that unless it's leaked, but it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird that there's been this contention about exclusivities. And then this month, a shit ton of Bethesda games end up on PlayStation Plus. It's, it's, it's weird. Anyway, moving on. Those are a bunch of games you can play soon, um, but what if you wanted to play something right now? Well, you can play Sherlock Holmes The Awakened, which is a remake of the original Sherlock Holmes The Awakened. Um, the Awakened is Sherlock encountering uh, eldritch horrors, Cthulhu, and stuff like that. Um, it's really creepy. It's like the first time Sherlock's whole logical, um, deterministic outlook on life is tested because things don't make sense anymore. Uh, his own mind can't be trusted, like his mind palace is being corrupted because of the influence of eldritchness and stuff like that. So it's a real, uh, it's like it's really attacking him personally kind of thing. Um, so it's really interesting from a story point of view from that. It's also, at least in the remake, it's the first time Sherlock meets Watson. So it's the beginning of that relationship and how that works out. And it is a sequel. Um, it's a sequel now, again, as part of a remake, uh, they've sort of restructured the chronology of these uh, cases. So Sherlock Holmes The Awakened is a direct sequel now to Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1, uh, which we are playing through on the channel right now. If you want to check it out, full Let's Play. Over on the YouTube channel. <laughs> this archive's over on the YouTube channel. Check it out. Um, moving on. Sherlock Holmes The Awakened. There's also Tron Identity um, from Mike Biffle. Uh, Tron Identity is a visual novel uh, murder mystery detective type thing that's set in the Tron universe. We kind of thought Disney were like, we're just going to put Tron in the warehouse for a bit and have people, you know, kind of forget about it and then pine for it and then we'll release another thing that we won't actually support at all and just leave it, throw it out to the wolves. But no, it, like at least they're doing something with the IP. Um, it looks good. To me, at least. Uh, I I mean, I really like the Tron aesthetic, so that's obviously not going to help. <laughs> I'm going to be somewhat biased because I really like uh, the look uh, of Tron world and so on. The story, not so much because it's like... I'm a software developer by trade and it's, you know, this is nonsense. This is not how computers work kind of thing, but I don't know. I kind of like, I'm kind of interested in it. Anyway, it's out now, if you want to check it out. Um, and then there's Wild Frost. So Wild Frost is a 
um, deck building roguelike thing like Slay the Spire and I dismiss Slay the Spire you may have noticed as part of the PlayStation Plus catalog thing um, and similarly I'm not going to play Wild Frost but from what I've seen from the developer on its social media, on its marketing, its trailers and stuff like that, it's very fun. They're at least attempting to make it fun uh, and funny. Um, so while I have no particular interest in playing it, I have some interest in watching people play it. So, you know, if, hey, if you're streaming Wild Frost, let me know. I'll check it out. You know, I'll hang out in your chat for a bit. Anyway, it's out now if you want to check it out yourselves. Um, but it does look very fun, and if you do have some interest in deck builders, I think you'll probably get uh, a kick out of Wild Frost. Anyway, however, after all of that good stuff, it is now time to talk about the worst part of video games, the video game industry. So, Dreams, PlayStation's most ambitious creative games, stops updates after four years. Uh, Media Molecule has announced it is ending support for Dreams. Dreams is a kind of follow-up to Little Big Planet. It is a creation suite. It's a set of tools for creating your own games, experiences, visual novels, what have you. It is very freeform. Uh, Little Big Planet was somewhat locked into you making platformy adventure type things, even though people really stretched the limit of those and made not platformy adventure things made like full films and there was like a remake of Final Fantasy 7 done entirely in Little Big Planet and stuff like that um which is very much not an adventure -y type game nuts right they made some crazy things and Dreams was even more freeing than that there have been some incredible creations done in Dreams and the fact that it is ending support is extremely disappointing um, they'll be ending live support for Dreams on September 1st of this year as the team is moving on to an exciting new project. I have a feeling that Dominion so Molecule have been very upfront about looking after the community, being really supportive. Little Big Planet 3 was kept in support for years. Um, Dreams was meant to be supported for like 10 years. Hasn't even made half of that. So again, something we'll probably never know, but I have a feeling Media Molecule are being forced here. Because Sony are looking to really push out live service games for the second half of PlayStation 5's um, life cycle. And Media Molecule would have experience in large, you know, heavy player bases kind of thing. Anyway. We know this won't be an easy message for everyone to hear, and it's certainly not been an easy decision. Dreams has been a special project for Media Molecule and helping this burgeoning community of game developers, tinkerers, creatives, collaborators, and dreamers grow and express themselves remains one of the best things we've ever done. Thank you for being part of it with us. We look forward to you joining us on our next adventure. So as pointed out here, Dreams is about to get a lot more limited in terms of how much you can create and save. As part of the winding down of support, they're also migrating servers. Those servers have considerably restrained um, specs and stuff like that. So the storage space has gone down. The amount of assets you can use in, in your creations has gone down and stuff like that. Um, this is just a big list of stuff that's changed. Most of it is worse off. Um, when the game went into early access, Sony said it had a 10-year plan for Dreams. It looks like it's not even going to make its halfway mark. It's pretty disappointing. Um, even if you want to look at it as a purely market thing, Dreams was effectively Roblox. Like, Sony had their own Roblox. Roblox makes billions a year. You know, they had that. If they had cultivated it a bit better, they could have done it with Dreams. Dreams did have an issue in that it was finding it difficult to retain players because um, the tools themselves, while extremely powerful, are a little tricky to understand. Um, and it was found that a lot of people were finding it easier to work with things like Unity that already exist and that are more or less created for this exact thing of making your own game. It's just disappointing. You know, because it was a really good um, suite of tools. Um, it was accessible to pretty much anyone who had a PlayStation. Uh, PlayStation 5 and 4. Um, not everyone has a beefy PC to run Unity. Not everyone understands how to write script or how to um, create 3D models and something like Blender and import it into Unity and stuff like that. 
you know, it had a little bit of a democratizing effect on game development, um, which is something that Roblox that I will give them credit for. I don't their other business practices not so much, but the fact that they are making creativity accessible to kids. Um, the fact that they then monetize it is kind of shit because it then means adults come in and you know just completely take over the place, which is not what it was supposed to be about. Anyway, moving on. Ghostwire Tokyo's latest PC update quietly adds de novo for some fucking reason. So it's been a year since the game launched and now they decide to throw de novo in. Uh, de novo is a DRM software. Uh, it is designed to make it difficult to pirate the game. Um, typically, the heaviest time a game is pirated is right when it is launched, which is why you'll find Denuvo is patched out a couple of years later, because they don't want to pay the license anymore, and if people were going to pirate it, they've done it already, kind of thing. Um, so Denuvo copy protection has, for some reason, been added to Ghostwire Tokyo. It wasn't in it uh, when it launched. It didn't have um, anti-piracy software. Um, potentially you could say that was because it was a PlayStation exclusive at the time. And so it was a PlayStation and PC exclusive and maybe Microsoft were like, fuck you, Sony kind of thing, but I don't know. It's kind of weird that they're adding it in now instead of when the game launched. Because adding it in now is kind of pointless, really. It's putting the, putting the cart before the horse or closing the barn when the horse is bolted or whatever it is. Uh, it's also noted that Redfall will have Denuvo at launch, which could also be a reason why it can't hit 60 frames per second, because Denuvo DRM does take processing power. It will take it away from the game, rendering every frame, 60 frames every second. If some of that rendering uh, processing power has to go off to Denuvo to check that this is a certified version of the game, it's going to take a hit to performance, at least on PC. Uh, why has Ghostwire Tokyo received Denuvo protection now? I don't know. It doesn't make sense. Uh, in contrast, Capcom this week removed Denuvo from Resident Evil Village two years after it originally released. So again, that's the usual thing with Denuvo is that it goes in, people are pissed about it because it affects performance of the game, and the only people who are uh, affected by Denuvo's impact on performance are legitimate purchasers of the game. Like, pirates don't have this problem. Like, if you're if, if a game at launch and it has Denuvo, the person pirating the game is getting the better experience. That's a problem. It's a problem when the person who is stealing, stealing, there's no real stealing, exactly. The person pirating the game is getting the better experience versus the person who actually purchased your t your product is getting a worse experience. That's an issue. That's the same thing as like, when there's copy protection on, you know, film Blu-rays and DVDs and stuff like that, and they have... 20 minutes of ads before you actually get to the film and you're like if I had pirated this I could just watch the film I know I guess that's not really an issue anymore because most things are on streaming services but th that's what it used to be that was also a big reason people pirated it because I don't want 20 minutes of ads just showing me the fucking film anyway DRM's a waste of time if someone's gonna pirate your game wait a day and it'll be cracked anyway Diablo 4's seasonal story content isn't a new campaign. Battle passes will take 80 hours to clear. 80 fucking hours to clear on a battle pass. Right, so Diablo 4 is going to be broken up into seasons. Like a lot of games are. Like a lot of live service games are now. Um, Diablo 3 did also have a seasonal thing. Um, and the developers of Diablo 4 are trying to say it's just going to be like Diablo 3's. And everyone was fine with that. Everyone was fine with that because it was free. You didn't have to buy a battle pass, you know, you didn't have to be playing the game for 80 hours in three months. That's a job. Um, that is effectively you playing the game, just Diablo, that's it, you don't play anything else for hours a day. I have a lot of games. I stream fairly regularly, a lot of different games. I'm not, I do not have time for that. Uh, I do not have time to pay money for this battle pass because it's, you know, it's not a free battle pass. I, I, I just resent the idea of the battle pass itself, mostly because you pay money for it, but you're paying, you're paying money for more work. Like you don't, there's no guarantee you will get the items involved in the battle pass. 
you know, for, be for people who may not be aware of what a battle pass is, it is effectively a roadmap um, to acquire items in the game. So you, you, you buy this battle pass and you level up. And every time you level up, you'll get an item associated with the battle pass. So level one, you'll get money. Level two, you'll get a cosmetic item. Level three, you'll get some kind of resource and so on and so on. And the big draw is the last level thing is some really cool thing, you know, and that's that's really what you bought the battle pass for in the first place. Just sell that. Just put that in the shop. Like, the, the battle pass shit is purely there to keep metrics up, and that is a mobile game thing. That is not a console PC thing. It's purely a mobile game thing. We just need you to play the game every day. The other annoying thing about battle passes and seasons in general is that once the season is over, you can't get that content again. So if there is actual story related stuff, which is what Diablo 4 is claiming, that there will be actual story content involved in all of the seasons, um, once the season's over, you can't get it again. That's shit. That's shit for people who are re actually invested in the story of Diablo. Um, it's also crap for game preservation. Like, how are you going to preserve this if you're deleting it every three months? Like, the, the entire live service battle pass season thing that big games are evolving into is absolutely terrible for longevity. Like, they're putting it out there as if it's going to be this living thing for ten years or what have you. It's like, if people want to go back to it, how do they go back to it? There's nothing there. You've deleted most of it. If people... if Like, okay, so people growing up on Fortnite now, um, or Roblox now, or... some of the Call of Duty Battle Pass stuff and stuff like that, if they're growing up on those games, right, they'll have nostalgia for those games because they, you know, played with their friends, it was a formative time of their years, and so on and so forth. And you'll see that nowadays... There are throwbacks to things like Castlevania, Metroid, Legend of Zelda, stuff like that, because people grew up on those games and they like them and they want to make their own version of it or they want to play it again and so on. What are they going to do when they want to go back and play the original Legend of Zelda? I can still do that. I can go back and play the original Super Mario Brothers, the original Final Fantasy and so on. How do you go back and play the original Fortnite? You can't. It's not there anymore. It's gone. It's deleted. Games changed drastically since then. There's no way to do that. There's no preservation put in place to do that. There's no way to go back and play the original Minecraft now. There's no way to go back and play the original Call of Duty Warzone. You know, there's no way to go back and play, etc. This is the issue with live service games. You know, there's no way to go back and play the original Destiny. That's terrible for game preservation for video games as a cultural kind of thing. To not be able to go back and play touchstones of the game, touchstones of your youth, that you can't go back and do that. That would be not like not being able to go back and watch The Lion King. Like it's gone. Can't watch it. You, the only thing you get is the live the live version of the Live and King. But people would be furious. You know, can't watch the original Star Wars ever again. You only have the sequels now. <laughs> like, come on, nobody will put up with that. The Mona Lisa has been shredded. Sorry, we only have this uh, poster version. That's that's what hangs in the Louvre now. And you need a battle pass to, to go watch it. Uh, like, we do not. We expect that video games be treated as a kind of cultural art form, but we we don't treat it that way. And by we, I mean the game industry. It's just shitty. Anyway. Well, with Star Wars, you actually can't see <laughs> You kind of can. It's just, I need to jump through some stupid fucking hoops to do it. God damn it, George. Why did you want to put bullshit CG in the background of all your stuff? Anyway, moving on. Um, industry body aims to improve game credits as developers complain they're being left out. So this is a push from IGDB, uh, the International Games Develop... I'm sorry, IGDA, International Games Developers Association, uh, trying to make uh, credits better. Uh, for video game developers. So there is an issue in that developers, uh, quality assurance testers, marketing people, uh, artists, and so on, if they leave the game development before the game ships, 
they tend to get left off the credits. Um, even if you haven't left the game and you're just a lowly localization tester, uh, you will be left off the credits because you're not important enough and all that kind of stuff. So IGDA are trying to say, that's shit. Someone worked on your game, put them in the credits, more or less. Uh, so not removing a name if a staff member leaves the company before launch and including all contract and full-time studio employees. So again, contract employees, because they're technically not employed. They don't get put on the credits, but they worked on the game. Uh, further advice includes retaining names of original staff in ports and remasters and remakes. So there was some stink when the Metroid Prime remaster came out that the credits of the original game were not included. Um, you know, it's a, if it's a remaster, you didn't remake the thing. You're just making it look nicer, which means the original code is still there. The original assets are still there. The people who worked on it should be given credit, and they weren't. Um, a survey um, by IGDB's... Uh, credits group SIG 51.3% uh, of responders either never seldom or sometimes receive official credit for their efforts an additional 83% of respondents indicated they were unsure or said no when asked if their employee uh, if their employer or client had a game credits policy so not having a game credits policy is also a big issue so we'll see how this goes uh, the IGDA is not like a governing body or anything like that they can only make recommendations it's Again, it is up to the developer, publisher, to decide if they want to actually take these ideas on board. They're good ideas. Most players skip the credits anyway, so like, it's not a big deal to just put people's names in it. Most of them are going to skip the credits anyway, guys. Like, you shouldn't. But they do. You know they do. Anyway, moving on. Uh, we're going to move on to some dumb stuff. So, you will have to pay extra if you want the Lord of the Rings Gollum in Elvish. Uh, June Chain Inc. Go back to bed, June Chain Inc. It's like 5 a.m. for you or something, 6 a.m. Um, anyway, they're going to be charging extra for a Gollum game if you want them to speak Elvish. And it's like, why are you doing this? This is so unnecessary. It should just be a feature in the game. Anyway, you think the Dalek would want to keep the Lord of the Rings fans on side, considering this game is kind of weird and probably will only appeal to actual fans of Lord of the Rings? But if you want the uh, the Elvish cast to speak Sindarin, the Elvish tongue, uh, you gotta pay an extra 10 bucks, which is kind of dumb, but here we are. Anyway, moving on. Uh, you can play Dead Space Demake uh, for free. It's over on itch.io. So we have De the original Dead Space, 2008, and then we have the Dead Space remake, 2023. Now you can play the Dead Space Demake of 19 something or other. He has something here. Dead Space Demake has everything you want and more. From necromorph limb, yeah, necromorph limb dismemberment to a fine texture mapping errors. You played Dead Space 2008 and you played Dead Space 2023. No, I haven't. I haven't done it yet. Anyway, it's time to soak in the horrid vibes of Dead Space 1998. Uh, it's pretty great uh, stuff. So the Dead Space demake. Uh, it's not a full game. It's like a 15 minute, 20 minute demo kind of thing where they go through a couple of beats of the original Dead Space. But it's like, it's a pretty cool idea. I know. It's just wandering around in your low poliness. Even has proper uh, limb dismemberment and stuff like that. Um, what is kind of funny though is that while this is a demake and it's meant to kind of look like it would run on the PS1, the PS1 would never, would never be able to run something like this. Absolutely not. Uh, I just think it's funny. Anyway, it's over on itch.io. On itch um, it's free. Give it a shot. Runs on PC, keyboard and mouse, and um, controller support. Anyway, that was the news for uh, 10th to the 16th of April, 2023. I'm going to leave Sherlock to loop. So you're too long, didn't watch. Uh, there is four minutes of Tears of the Kingdom that I refuse to watch until I finish Breath of the Wild, but you can go watch it if you want. There is 25 minutes of Final Fantasy 16 out there that I refuse to watch until I've played the game, but you can go watch it if you want. Uh, Immortals of Avum is first person magic shooting. Um, Redfall is going to be 30 frames per second on launch. Um, other things that I've forgotten. Uh, the, the Game Pass, not Game Pass. Uh, PlayStation Plus <clears throat> for this month is pretty heavy Bethesda stuff. Um, IGDA are pushing for a credits uh, policy for all game developers. Um, 
Diablo 4 is pushing out its battle pass bullshit and trying to make it seem like 80 hours for your battle pass is fine, and it is not, uh, and so on. <clears throat> this nukes news, avoid spoilers. Yeah, pretty pretty much. Like, I can't even say for definite that they are spoilers. Because, again, I haven't watched them. I don't know if there are spoilers. But I'm trying to avoid things that are like, hey, what does this mean for Tears of the Kingdom? And it shows a screenshot of something I haven't seen in Breath of the Wild. And I'm like, <laughs> go away. I don't want to see stupid sexy Ganondorf. Not yet, anyway. <laughs> Let me see it later. Anyway, that is the news. But what is happening on the channel? So our channel update for this week is... If I can find us. Here. So... This is our Game Mosaic thing roadmap for the first half of this year. Um, so these are all the games that I plan to feature or have already featured on the channel. Um, Green Tick, it's been featured. Yellow uh, Dots, it is in progress. Grey Clock, it is on the way. And if it has a little gold wedge in the top corner, it's a full Let's Play. And if it doesn't have a symbol at all, it'll be on the channel eventually. Just give me give me a second. Anyway, this week we played, um, as, as well as all of the Let's Plays that are going on at the moment, uh, we played Season, A Letter to the Future on Friday as part of my Foley Plays Games A Bit series, where we take a look at newly released titles and play the first opening hours of them. Um, Season is a kind of meditative, mindful kind of thing. It is very chill, almost scrapbooking thing where you are traveling through this world that is winding down. People are moving on to a new age or a new season um, and you are more or less cataloging stories, sounds, visuals, stuff like that of what this season was like. It is very much a walking sim kind of thing. Um, but I found it interesting. Um, probably difficult to stream because there's not a whole lot to it. You kind of just go around and you either point a microphone at something or you point a camera at it. But it's chill, you know, it's it's good if you were having, if you want to like just chill for the evening, something like that. Anyway, next week though, uh, the schedule is going to look like it has for quite a while at this point. Uh, we have Resident Evil 4 Monday and Saturday, uh, Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 on Wednesday, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild on Thursday, no stream on Friday, I'll be playing D&D and Weekly News Recap on Sunday. However, we will probably be finishing Sherlock Holmes and Zelda this week. So they'll be the finales, hopefully. That's the plan, at least. Um, Resi 4, we're only about halfway through the game, so there's still a fair bit left in that. But the plan is to... F we, will pro we will definitely finish Chapter 1, uh, Sherlock Holmes, this week. We might not finish Breath of the Wild, um, but it is my intention to finish Breath of the Wild this week. Um, but yeah. That is the plan for next week. Um, Resi, Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1, Breath of the Wild, Resi again, and then uh, Weekly News Recap. Um, I will be streaming more Breath of the Wild later today, um, mostly because since that trailer came out, I'm finding it difficult to actually use my computer without being spoiled on, on Zelda stuff. So um, we're going to try to rush through, or not rush through, but we're going to try to finish out the Champion's Ballad stuff today. Um, so that on Thursday we can focus purely on Hyrule Castle and the end of the game. Okay, no worries Melwan, thanks for dropping in. I'm gonna head off, um, I'm gonna get something to eat, and then I'll be back with Breath of the Wild pretty soon after that. So hang around if you want, or Doom Train Inc, go back to bed. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow uh, for Resi 4. Have a good one. Thank you.